Hi, I'm Tom. At the end of every podcast, you'll hear from me. I'm going to talk about some of the language you heard in the programs, and talk about ways to help you learn English. Remember Carolina in the airport? Listen to part of her conversation again. Is this your first visit to the UK? Yes, it is. And what are you going to do here? I'm a student. I'm going to study at the University of Newcastle. To talk about the future, they both use "going to." The immigration officer says, "And what are you going to do here?" And Carolina says, "I'm going to study at the University of Newcastle." They both used "going to" to talk about the future, because they are talking about plans. When the immigration officer says, "What are you going to do here?" He's asking Carolina what her plan is, and she says, "I'm going to study because that's her plan. She decided it before she left Venezuela." So, we use "going to" to talk about future plans. But listen to another part of Carolina's conversation. Thank you. And how long is the course? How long do you intend to stay in the country? Three years. Three years. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. Do you intend to work in this country? Oh no, no, I'm not going to work. Well, maybe in the university holidays, but the British embassy in Caracas said that was okay. The immigration officer said, "How long do you intend to stay in the country, and do you intend to work in this country?" Again, he was asking about Carolina's future plans, but he said, "Do you intend?" Intend is a formal way to talk or ask about plans. You might hear this verb intend at an airport immigration desk or on an immigration form. It's another way to ask about your plans. One more thing: Did you notice that when Carolina arrived at the desk, the immigration officer said "Good evening." He didn't say "Good night." Do you know why not? We only say good night when we say goodbye or when we go to bed. When we meet someone after around five o'clock in the afternoon, we say good evening, and we only say good night to people before we go home or before we go to bed. Okay, in another part of the show, we heard Daniel and Alice playing a game. Listen to part of it again. You've got ten seconds to write down. Things you can find in a kitchen. Okay, Daniel, how many? Um, five, Tess. How about you, Alice?、Uh, seven, I think. Okay, let's hear your seven words, Alice. Things you find in a kitchen:、uh, fridge, cooker, pans, plates, knife, fork, spoon. I hope all of you have a notebook where you keep new words. A vocabulary notebook. Think about how you put new words into your notebook. Do you put them in alphabetically, all the words beginning with A, then all the words beginning with B, or do you organise your new words another way? Some people put words into their notebooks in word families. They put words together that are connected in some way. For example, you could have a page in your vocabulary notebook called kitchen. And you could keep all the words from the game, fridge, cooker, pan, all of those words, on the kitchen page of your notebook. You could have pages for, say, sports, football, tennis, bowling, and so on. And you can write more than just the words. You can write the verbs that go with the words: play football, but go bowling or go skiing. There's no right way or wrong way to keep your new vocabulary. You have to find the way that helps you remember the new words. Right. Finally, after every podcast, I'll try to show you something that you can try to use in your own English. This week, I heard this interesting expression. Excuse me, am I in the right line for immigration? Um, I don't know, dear. It depends. What nationality are you? Now, there are two things there I want to talk about. Firstly, the old lady called Carolina "dear." She said, 
I don't know, dear. Sometimes older people might call you dear. It's a friendly, affectionate thing to do. But be careful, it might sound a bit strange if you try to use it yourself. The other thing I noticed was that the old lady said, it depends. She didn't know the answer because she needed more information. Can you translate it depends into your language? Try to use it in English this week. Right, that's all for this time. Bye for now. See you next time.